Hey everybody, welcome to the 1804 Show, Chapter 2. I'm your host, Dollar Wheel, and this is another episode of 1804 History. And I wanted to first off say thank y'all for your support, love, and supporting me and everything. And make sure that you like, comment, subscribe to the channel. The 1804 show chapter two. Um, I wanted to come back and do an episode on this woman who sacrificed her life in order for us to have voting rights. And it's unfortunate that she was murdered in Selma, Alabama. You know, a lot of people don't know about the heroes of the civil rights movement like that because of the fact that we was just taught about Dr. King, but it was more people than Dr. King who died in order for us to be able to have these type of opportunities. So I just had to come and remember this brave woman because of the fact that it wasn't her fight. She she was from Detroit, Michigan. And she saw the news on Bloody Sunday. My connection bad, y'all. Sorry about that. But yeah, she saw the news footage of Bloody Sunday that happened on March 7, 1965. And she was sat in just like people all over the country. So she took it upon herself to lead her husband and children to go down to Alabama and fight for freedom rights. And that was the last trip that she made. And you just don't hear about these type of stories because of the fact that people don't really put them to the forefront like that. But she went down there to help and escort demonstrators from Selma to Montgomery. And she was in a car with a guy named Leroy Morton. He was 19 years old at the time, but Four Klansmen saw her and him in the car together, which was a no-no back in them days. So they approached the vehicle and she was struck several times and he was hit as well. And the car ran off the road and They actually came to the car because they drove into a ditch. So they actually came to the car. So one of the Klansmen stated that we should hit that nigger again. And the Klansman was like, no, that's good. He's dead. So luckily that the Klansman was a FBI informant by the name of Gary Thomas Rowe. And he actually told the FBI about the murder. So the three Klansmen, instead of him, was charged of violating both their civil rights. But they didn't tell that he was an FBI informant because they didn't want to bring attention because he was an informant who pretty much um, infiltrated the Ku Klux Klan and wanted to give people the chance to um, to know that the police department and judges and city council, everybody was in on everything. So they wanted to basically um, crack down Because in the South, everybody was pretty much 
was radical, you know what I'm saying? Not in a good way, but in a bad way. Because in the South, you know, you really didn't have much protection. Even he said, Leroy Morton was like, you got real scary that the FBI was there and couldn't prevent it. So a lot of times these FBI informants committed crimes against African-Americans, but they was free and then they didn't get charged because of the fact that they was FBI informants. So they was authorized 15 minutes of police on supervision to do anything that they wanted to. And most of the time they got away with it. But this woman was was scrutinized for being a white woman who drove all the way down to Michigan and to Alabama just so we can get a vote and rights act. <laughs> and it's so unfortunate because I don't think even they said that it would have not been a vote in rights act if it wasn't for her death. But but they criticized her in the media really bad, saying that she was a drug addict, saying that she was a prostitute and slept with Negroes on the road and everything like that. And just trying to deflect the fact that um, the guy who actually could have committed a crime was a part of the FBI, so they had to make it seem like it was a making party or whatever. So they said a lot of mean things. Her family down south, well, up north, excuse me, caught hell because of her mother, choices and everything. And she was the mother of five children. And she was a housewife. So many years later, um, she was finally given credit when it was due. And finally was able to um, be considered a minor, a hero. And I say this because of the fact that we take a lot of stuff that we have today for granted. I don't think all white people bad because there was some white people that died for us. So I would never say that all white people bad because it was some white people that helped me. It's white people that support me now. And sometimes, you know, white people would be there for you quicker than your own people. And she made a sacrifice. She could have stayed home. She could have mind her business. She could have went on with her life, but her conscience got to her and she left for Alabama the next day. Because people don't understand how traumatizing and pathetic Bloody Sunday was. And I'm going to do an episode on that too. But I just wanted to just come here and just talk about it because this doesn't really get discussed in our school curriculum or it really don't be no documentaries on her like that. So I just have found this just scrolling on YouTube (laughs) and I just had to talk about it. And just wanted to tell her children and her grandchildren that I appreciate what your mom done. She didn't deserve what happened to her. And I appreciate what she did for us, for my people and for sacrificing her life in order for me to be able to vote. And that's why we got to vote y'all. I'm not saying just the presidential election, but the city and state elections too. We have to make sure that we keep people who's 
in charge, who want to keep things the same, who want to stay um, not just um, what's the word I'm trying to use? Conservative, but liberal as well. Because the only time that they actually address some things is when it's during election time. But, you know, they don't care about us like that until they need to be reelected. So we have to be very cautious and very um, choosy about who we elect in office. Because it's people that's in office are the ones who are responsible for her murder. You know, n- not just the people, but their beliefs and their mind frame and their heart. You know what I'm saying? Because people just sit back and just allow things to happen. And they just think that we're dumb and they think we see now or they just think that we naive, that we don't know what's going on. But a lot of us do know what's going on. And we have to make sure we got to make sure that these stories get passed on to the next generation. And it's just upsetting and very humiliating when you think about it, you know, just being an American citizen. And then we had endured so much. You know, there's people that got killed, people got beaten, people got terrorized because they wanted to become a voter. You know, just the thought of being born into this country and you had to go through hell in order to vote. And to me, I feel like that's unfair. You know, it's really unfair about what our parents and grandparents have to endure and have to go through in order for us to have these certain things. And we have to maintain it. We have to take advantage of these opportunities that we still have because they are working on taking things away from us. And we also have to remember the people who gave their lives and who sacrificed because it's only fair, you know, but yeah, Miss Viola, you not forgotten. And I thank you for your help and I thank you for your consideration. And I also thank you for um being a human being, being a woman who saw how pretty much saw how he was being treated and took it upon yourself to do something about it. Everybody can't say that. A lot of people, which is my name, business, but you came all the way from Detroit to Alabama to help us, you know, help my people, you know, get their Voting Rights Act. And that is the definition of a hero. But yeah, I just want to say, Miss Viola, rest in peace. And thank y'all for tuning in tonight. Everybody who did tune in, thank y'all. And comment and subscribe and share. And peace.